Yo, what's up everybody? It's Drew Berry and I'm back with another custom card review. This is pretty hype. This is number 16. Pretty excited to get into it. It's going to be all about cards that have the keyword shuffle. So we already have that in Marvel Snap, right? You can think of cards like Crystal, for instance, right? She's going to shuffle those cards back into your deck. Or you can think about it a little bit more creatively and think about Quake, how she shuffles the locations around. And some of the berries came up with really creative applications for this keyword. So I'm excited to show you guys. But next keyword is one cost. Now, for clarification, this can either be a one cost, a one energy card with any text that you want, no restrictions other than having that one cost, or it can be a card with one cost in its text. Text. By example, Killmonger says destroy all one cost cards. So that would qualify in this challenge, right? Despite being a three cost card. Okay, so I hope that's clear enough. And if you want to make a card, you can just jump into the Berryverse Discord. Totally free, great community where we talk about strategy in the game, custom cards. People can help you out with the text, the art, the balance of the card, and you can make the card right there. It's really easy to do. And then you just submit one card in the weekly challenge channel. If you do end up submitting something different later on, just go back and delete that old one. It'd be much appreciated. There are no bad submissions. I like to see everybody's creative ideas so if you've got one throw it in there all right let's get to this top 10 ah but first we have my card always gotta toss in my card little sneaky surprise so i got the grim reaper a 4-4 on reveal destroy all cards that were shuffled into your deck that means all so I wanted to make this clear. Um, I'm talking like if I drew a rock, because it was originally shuffled into my deck, it gets destroyed on the Grim Reaper on reveal. Because I kind of thought like, oh, it just seems a little bit weak. Maybe you pair it with Thanos, you have all the stones in your deck, and then it discounts for death, and that's a great application. So I thought maybe that'd be a cool synergy. But also, I made it four cost so that it's not too broken, it's not too easy to do, because by the time you can play the Grim Reaper, you've probably drawn quite a few stones, and then he's only destroyed maybe like two or three cards which maybe is okay but you're not impacting the board you're not manipulating your opponent or like changing anything that they're doing it's not their side their deck it's just yours so maybe it's okay you know like if subterranea popped up then it's great right get rid of those rocks and it's like just see you later any kind of rocks vibranium maybe you, you shuffled some bright vibranium in there because of the mines and then you get that destroyed so like there's a few applications there but those you can't really rely on right so you wouldn't tech in this card uh, for that purpose so I felt like, well, to give him a little bit of buff, if you do uh, draw it, if you do play it, we can still get it destroyed with the Grim Reaper. It's going to destroy all the cards that were at one point shuffled into your deck. You could even think about it with Mjolnir. If you draw Mjolnir early, play it, and you don't want that spot being taken up on your board, you could use Grim Reaper to get it destroyed. Something like that. Who knows? I also want to clarify that it doesn't work with Lockjaw. Lockjaw, and you're going to see this repeatedly throughout this video, but Lockjaw is swap, not shuffle. So it's swapping a card and there's no shuffling happening in the deck so that would not count if you were putting cards through lockjaw cycle and then played grim reaper to get things destroyed would not work uh obvious counter is to dark hawk right dark hawk wants a lot of cards in your opponent's deck and if you destroy all of those cards well he's not gonna have a lot of value right so that was the idea there a little bit of a dark hawk counter overall this is probably weak i would say maybe but could find its uh, niche and i just wanted a interesting application to incorporate the destroy mechanic because i love it uh with a shuffling cards into your deck so there you go that's my card let's get to the top 10 number 10 seto ap's spy master all right so spy master is a 2-1 on reveal shuffle a probe into your opponent's deck well what's a probe well probe is a zero cost zero power so similar to widow's bite right similar stat line uh, while this is in your hand your opponent can see your hand okay so what that means is because i'm putting it into my opponent's deck they're the ones that are going to draw it I'm going to be the one who can see their hand when the probe is in their hand. Now, the cool part about this card is you can play this on curve, right? You can play it on two. They could draw the probe literally next turn. I get to see their hand on turn three. That's probably like great value, right? Or maybe later on on turn six, I get to see their hand. But it's kind of, in a way, a one instance, right? So I have to hope they draw it. That's probably the most difficult part about this. You could get literally no value, right? Out of Spy Master, especially if Subterranea popped up, put a bunch of rocks, something like that, right? But you could still have the opportunity to see your opponent's hand, which is huge. That's crazy. It's going to help you out so much for your later turns of where to apply your power and which cards to play so they don't get countered. But I like that it's 
essentially a one instance card because your opponent's just going to play that probe to get rid of it so that they you know they, they don't want to show you what their next draw is or anything like that right so they want to get rid of that probe asap uh, so they'll probably play it and then it takes up a spot on their board that they didn't really want similar to widow's bite value uh, so yeah i thought this was a pretty cool application um pretty balanced just because it's not very consistent that they'll draw it and maybe when they do maybe their hand isn't even that great and they don't care to show you it doesn't even really matter all that much um, but a really sweet combo would be with wave right if you know that they have the probe in hand and you can somehow time your wave to brick their hand so that it costs four and then if they want to pay off the probe to get rid of it they got to play it as four cost oh that would hurt so bad bad that would be a really sweet combo it's just a little bit tricky because you won't know that they have the probe until they do because you see their hand um, but then by the time you play wave they'll probably have already played the probe so some timing issues need to line up but really cool idea i really like the idea of uh seeing each other's hands in some form or application right imagine you're running like cable or cable came out of like x mansion and actually took the probe and then you show your opponent's hand <laughs> Oh, that would happen to me. Number nine, Simeon Fridays, Fitzroy. All right, so this was really interesting. What a, what a, what a smart idea we have here. So it's a three cost, zero power card. Fitzroy is an ongoing card. Shuffle the reveal order of your opponent's cards. Isn't that interesting? You might be thinking, who cares? That doesn't matter. If they play one card a turn, it literally does nothing, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's not a lot of value against certain decks but there's a lot of decks that really rely on playing cards in a certain order and if you can disrupt that oh my gosh it's going to hurt big time uh hazmat for instance is a deck that i like to play quite a bit and in that deck you typically want hazmat to be the first thing revealed and then you play it out all your other cards so that you know they they don't get the negative power if you have luke cage then you're probably fine and then then that's no big deal but sometimes you don't draw that combination so you want to play hazmat first hit your opponent stuff first and then whatever else you play on that turn you don't want to get affected with that negative power so that could be a small application another one is invisible woman think about the hella decks right if you got invisible woman then you got modok and then you got hella you really want that modok to go off before hella that's the whole reason you set up that combination of cards. And if, if Fitzroy is out on the field and, and it's a 50-50 now, if Modoc reveals first or Hella, oh my gosh, that's this. And not to mention that's the, at the end of the game because of Visible Woman's ability, right? So like you're going into a four or eight cuber or whatever and, and, and you're just rolling like, oh, I hope Modoc reveals first. <laughs> so that could be pretty wild. And then Mystique is another one. You, typically you want to play like Patriot or anything else and then you play Mystique, Cerebro, Mystique, right? you always want mystique to be second because otherwise she's copying nothing she's copying absolutely jack all so if she ends up being the first one to reveal because of fitzroy oh that feels bad you land a nice fitzroy like with priority right and then your opponent's cards are next to reveal because at least they might know if fitzroy's on the field okay I, I i have a chance of ruining my reveals i gotta be cautious here maybe only play one card but if you do it on the same turn you have prio and and fitzroy first and then your opponent's like reveal sequence gets all messed up oh, that'd be funny what a, what an interesting way to uh take a rule in snap that you don't see in other card games and and make a cool idea like this so i really appreciated this idea uh thank you for submitting number eight max beams abigail brand all right this one's pretty neat so it's a three six when you play a card here shuffle it back in your deck and draw a card um so you're probably thinking right off the hop this is lockjaw but it's not quite right because lockjaw gives you that instant return um where you get the card to pop up right away it's random but you get the card right away whereas this actually locks in a location for you you almost want to might want to consider playing zero on this so that you just get the three six body right but maybe you want a lot of drop maybe you want to get to your certain combination so you're willing to sacrifice a location as the Ab abigail location and you just shuffle you start playing your stones or whatever to get them back into your deck and keep drawing cards right i think it's a really interesting way to cycle and is a lot more balanced because you're paying the energy cost for all those cards no matter what you're just trying to get to your combos a little bit faster which could end up being pretty broken but like again you're pretty well sacrificing that location unless you decide to move things over tokens anything along those 
those lines. Uh, typical, you know, like lockjaw cycle location, right? You can't really reliably put the cards you want there uh, unless you like cheat it out or mana or move it or anything like that, right? So I thought it was really cool. That's why she has the premium stat line, right? To offset that. Whereas lockjaw, because he always ends up getting that like high power cards coming out of the lockjaw cycle or something, he's able to cheat out something that you want. Uh, he gets offset to a 3-2. This one's a 3-6. I appreciate that. I find it very cool, very interesting. It's almost kind of what I'd rather Lockjaw be in a way, you know? Like the Lockjaw is really fun. I like that card. Uh, but this one just seems a little bit more balanced almost, especially with the current meta state right now. So very well done. Thank you for submitting. Number seven, we got Mark's Ronin. All right, dude, Mark, you absolutely crushed it in the art department here, okay? So I'm going to hopefully show all of the other variants because Mark had like nine variants that all looked so clean i absolutely loved it this is one of my favorites right here i also like the chibi one uh the one with jeremy renner looks really cool and the one in the middle is just super badass so like i just really love the art here and the ability is cool too because it uses um a token in the game that i don't see used very often that's the ninja right? The ninja that pops out of Shadowlands, it's a negative two power card and it costs one. Um, so the idea behind Ronin, uh, well, I should talk about what it is first. So it's a two zero on reveal shuffle two ninjas into your opponent's deck. If your opponent has a ninja in hand, they must play it. Okay. So that's where it gets a little bit iffy for me. I'll be honest, because how do you force your opponent to play something to use energy? Like what if they can't or anything like that? Or, you know, that's really disruptive because then if they draw a ninja on six, they can't play their six cost and they got to play like a five cost plus a ninja. Like the value there is through the roof and the ninja itself is negative two power. So if they end up playing those two ninjas, which is what you're kind of hoping for, um, essentially Ronin's a two, four, which is a premium stat line breaks your opponent's hand because they're drawing cards that they don't want and they have to play those. So it's not even, it's better than a 2-4 because your opponent's using two energy. So it's almost like a 0-4 in a way, a roundabout way. But of course, there is the variance that your opponent has to draw those cards. So that does offset the balance a little bit. But I think for the most part, this is probably a little bit busted. I would almost rather just see, you know, shuffle two ninjas in your opponent. Maybe if the, maybe if the ninjas cost zero. Then they had to play the ninjas, right? That would make sense to me, right? Because it's a free play. It's negative two power. They got to throw it out there. It takes up a spot, a location spot as well. I think that could be a little bit more balanced, but the way ninjas are in the game right now, and I don't I believe they would ever make two different kind of ninjas. Uh, they are one negative two cards, uh, but the art here is super cool. I do like the idea of having to play a card. I think that's interesting, right? Put something in my opponent's deck. They have to play it when it's dropped. It just can't be too disruptive or else it's absolutely just through the roof value in so many different aspects. Um, but really cool. Really love it. I'm going to show you guys all of the variants because the work that was put into this card is through the roof. I really appreciate it, Mark. Thank you for submitting. Number six, Ken's Howard the Duck. Oh no. <laughs> Look at this card, man. Oh, goodness me. I feel like his expression in this is perfect for the effect, right? That's what your opponent's going to be doing. They're just going to be looking at you like, are, you, are we serious? We're doing this right now. We're doing the Howard the Duck deck. Like, what, is this what's happening? Okay, so what, it, what is Howard? Uh, Howard is a 2-2. Two, two. On reveal, shuffle two Howard the Ducks into your opponent's deck. So simple, so funny, and so chaotic. And, and, and oh my gosh, it could get out of hand. Um, essentially, your opponent's going to draw one of those Howards. And they'll decide to deck and play it. And maybe they'll be a little bit upset because you put some ducks into their deck that they're going to do it back to you. And then you got two ducks in your deck and then you draw one of them and then you put two more in their deck. And then all of a sudden there's like deck sizes of like 20 cards in each player's deck and 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 it's just ducks it's just an absolute pond up in here we got ducks everywhere so great dark hawk value right of course you're putting two cards in your opponent's deck and then they do it to you and then there's cards everywhere so dark hawk just gets value like insane maybe black widow because you don't want them to draw those ducks because if they do then they have the opportunity to play them and then put ducks in your deck and you don't want that so you want them to have a nice thick deck that they don't draw from maybe that's the idea right um, absorbing man, right? Let's let's just 
more ducks, all the ducks. We can even put in Wong and then, and then it's just ducks everywhere. There's, we got ducks all over the place. So, <laughs> dude, I don't know. I think it'd be funny. It's kind of a meme card, which, you know, Marvel Snap could use a little bit more of those fun meme cards. Uh, just, just like that actually can be a deck builder, not just like a one-off. Um, so I'm here for it. But also, my goodness, I, I, I'm concerned. This would be so chaotic. But the expression, the card, the art looks great as well. The effect is simple and i really appreciate that and i think it's relatively balanced it's just nuts it's gonna tilt a lot of people oh my gosh number five space bars shroud yo this one's spicy i like i really like this idea here so a three two on reveal unreveal and shuffle the position of all locations reveal them at the end of the game so being a three cost card you're probably going to play this on turn three and all of the locations will have been revealed at that point in time okay um this isn't going to create new locations or anything like that it's going to be the same three that both players have experienced and witnessed, um, but they're going to be unrevealed and they're going to be shuffled around so you don't know where they are. What if one's like negative zone and it's giving negative three power to the all the cards that you're playing there and then all of a sudden you thought it was on the right, it got shuffled up and now it's on the left or maybe it's still on the right or it's in the middle. Like You don't know where it is now and you won't find out until the end of the game. So it's a bit like scary on where you're going to play your cards. Um, that's just one example. I'm sure there's a bunch of locations out there that could be pretty interesting. So I was thinking, okay, what are ways we can maybe manipulate that? And I was thinking, okay, magic, storm, those kinds of things, right? Because at least you could create it into limbo, flooded location. That overrides the location anyways. So at least there's one spot that you know the location is that flooded, limbo, what what have you. Another few are like Scarlet Witch, Rhino, like any cards that change up the locations are a way to get around the unrevealed, right? But you're still not going to know which one you removed, right? <laughs> So like you could you could be hoping that that was the negative zone, but you're not gonna know. There's still gonna be two out there that you just don't know what they are, and you'll find out at the end of the game. And maybe they have uh, even bigger implications. Maybe it's like Monster Island, and when it reveals again, it's gonna trigger its on reveal, and then both players get a nine power monster again, something like that. Or or Shadowlands get the ninjas, or just anything like that. Central Park squirrels fly out ag once again because it would happen the first time, and when it's revealed the second time, it's gonna happen again. And there's a few that give power, like it could be something like that like mirror island or who knows what there are so many implications all the like removing ongoing effects no on reveals trigger here i guess that one wouldn't matter on reveal would resolve before the end of the game so that's fine but anyways it was pretty interesting i was thinking captain marvel maybe just because i don't know how you guys feel about the interaction but the way i understand if shroud was played before captain marvel the end of game trigger from shroud would happen first and then captain marvels would resolve last so that when all the locations are revealed captain marvel can kind of figure out like oh maybe i can win the game if i fly over to this location that we didn't know about before the end of the game that sort of thing so i don't know if it would work exactly like that but i thought maybe that was a sneaky way uh, to get a little bit more value out of this one but really cool really creative way to incorporate the shuffle keyword into this uh, week's challenge so thank you so much for submitting number four jackpack's two gun kid dude this one's so good jackpack is killing it jackpack is the one that made the stan lee card which is probably my favorite custom card of all time that I have seen uh, since covering them on this channel. Uh, and this card was so good. I wanted to put it even higher, but the only reason I didn't is for slight balance concerns, but thematically absolutely crushing it here. So a two cost, two power card. That's nothing to write home about. Nobody cares about that, but on reveal, shuffle a gun into each player's deck. What's a gun? A gun is a zero, zero. If you were the first person to draw their gun, plus four energy this turn. I feel like I messed up the grammar, not actually jackpack. I probably wrote that incorrectly, but essentially the first one that draws a gun from their deck is going to get plus four energy on that turn plus four energy is a lot of energy okay <laughs> so like that's a huge rant spike that's like getting project pegasus for free when your opponent doesn't get it like it's just a lot of energy especially if that happens on the last turn you can make those big swings so i feel like that's the only reason that i kind of held back but like really cool idea because essentially you know your opponent's going to be trying to dig through their deck to get there maybe you play a deck where you end up playing rock slide or whatever rocks to throw rocks into their deck so that they don't get the kid's gun or what if you play cable cable you steal the gun i know there's not a very good chance of it probably like a one in eight at that point but still 
Like if you s- steal the gun and then you got two guns and then you get like plus eight energy on a turn or whatever, you end up drawing yours. Oh my gosh, that'd be too funny. A Mantis is another one that you could uh, use to steal a card. Oh my gosh, that'd be that'd be so good. I, I just really love the flavor behind this one. It might be just a little bit too powerful, but I like the idea. I always really, really enjoy this of little mini quests built into uh, cards uh, that are balanced and not too wordy, just make a lot of sense. So this one is just great. We both have a gun. Who can get to it first? That little mini quest that's built into the game on top of the locations, on top of trying to win with power. It just makes this really fun scenario and probably for a lot of highlight moments. So really love this card, Jack Pack. You've done it again. Well done. Number three, Xadra's Sleepwalker. All right, this is probably my sleeper pick in these top 10. You see what you see what you see what I did there? That was pretty nice. Okay, but no, for real, when I saw this card, I thought, okay, that's that's kind of neat, but I don't know, I don't know if I'll end up putting it in the video. It was pretty neat. But then I kept looking, I kept reading, I was like, wow, that is actually so cool. This is so simple. I could see this being in Snap. These top three, by the way, like uh, oh my gosh, so good. So Sleepwalker is a one five premium stat line. We're talking Ebony Ma levels, not even, right? The Ebony Ma's even got more, but really, really good. Titania, right? Titania level of power. At the end of the game, shuffle this card into your deck. So you're probably thinking, what? That's, that's Garbo. Why would, why would I want to play a card that at the end of the game is just going to dip, not give me that power benefit, and take up a spot the entire game that I could have played something else at? Well, you would be correct, but there's combinations that we have to address here. Uh, for instance, Zero. You play Zero or Sauron or whatever. Oh, well, not Sauron, actually. Sauron doesn't work, but Zero, right? Removes the ability of this card, and great. Now that was essentially two energy for eight power. You're happy days. Uh, Venom. Well, let's eat them up. Right, you could even Carnage if you needed to, just to get that plus two power. Why not? And the destroy trigger for your death. But Venom is a fantastic application because you get the entire amount of power. You could play a whole bunch of cards at the Venom location, Venom it up, and then you have a big Venom, and that always works. Venom loves big power cards that don't cost a lot. Other things are like Crossbones, right? So the, a Crossbones, he needs the location to be winning. So 1-5 is really going to help you play that Crossbones and get that card out there. So I think that's a great application as well. And then there's the overarching idea of having priority. So we have cards like Ghost that make sure that you always go second, right? It gives your opponent priority for the remainder of the game. Um, but there's a lot of cards that would rather you have priority so that, you know, you you can play the card first to get your Wong combination off or what have you. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but you get the idea, right? You want to trigger on reveal before your opponent Cosmos that lane, that, that instance, right? So having a 1-5, just having that power out there kind of helps you get prio for the remainder of the game. It will dip at the end of the game, which is a bit of a bummer, but at least up until that point, you can make sure that your arm reveals will trigger when you want them to, that sort of uh, c- condition being met. And lastly, another combo I was thinking that would be pretty funny is if you Viper this over, because yeah, you're giving them five power, but that's going to leave and they probably don't have a way to manage that. So you're just going to take up a spot at their location and then that card's going to dip. So Viper's actually a pretty nice combo with Sleepwalker. I really, really like this. Also interesting implications with like being cheated out. You would never want to run this or it'd be a terrible high roll in like a Jubilee deck, Lockjaw or anything like that because it ends up on your board and then it's just going to dip back to the deck. We also don't have too much synergy with like cards being in your deck. You could look at like, I don't know, maybe possible Dark Hawk synergies or something like that. But I, I feel like overall, you wouldn't end up really running that in that in that kind of deck. It's like a reverse M'Baku, now that I think about it. Like M'Baku flies out of your deck at the end of the game. Uh, if, he, if he wasn't able to make it Sleepwalker, he's, he's going back to sleep. He's going back in there, back to his cozy bed. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> anyways, I really, really appreciate the uh, thought behind this card. And it's just something that I could see being in Snap. It's such a creative idea. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for submitting. Number two, Persona Trashes, Volstag. Yo, speaking of cards that I could see being in the game, this feels like it should be in the game. A 6-6, six, six, when this gets discarded, shuffle it into your deck and it costs zero. It just works so well with the discard package, right? Think about like Lady Sif is going to probably discard this, right? Great. It's going to cost zero. It goes back into the deck. Happy days. And then if we draw it, great. Maybe we run Jane Foster. 
Jane Foster synergy in like a weird like discard package, right? With Thor, and you can draw Mjolnir, right? And Volstag, and that's six power, and then six to your Thor. All of a sudden, all the Thors are all working together here, which is pretty exciting. Um, so thematically, it's pretty spot on, but you have to like somehow incorporate a little bit of discard into that package as well, right? Um, but just, and, and balance wise, so balanced, so balanced, right? Not great as a 6-6, six, six, never the thing you want to do with this card. You don't want to play it for six. You want to discount it to zero, have it go into your deck and bring it back out through some means, right? It reminds me a lot of stature, right? If you discard opponent's uh, card in their hand, then stature gets discounted to one. She's actually seven power, uh, but you have to pay one for her. Well, Volstex at least free and synergizes with a few other things, as I mentioned, um, but you have to draw it again, which is the difficulty. So anyways, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, and look at the variants. Oh my God. Gosh, we got like the cartoon one right at the top there with the beer. Oh my gosh. And the and then holding Thor's hammer, I would say. Is, is that Stormbreaker, I do believe? Uh, uh, getting that lightning charge. That's pretty cool. It's like Stormbreaker, Volstag. And then we got like young Volstag when he was like all jacked and didn't have the, the beer belly. You know what I'm saying? So I, the art is great. Really well done. Really nice package here. Very realistic card that I could absolutely see in Snap uh, today. So I really appreciate it. Well done. Persona Trash. Number one, Infernites, the Infinity Gauntlet. Holy smoke. So I tweeted out about this one and I just couldn't hold back from putting it as the number one card here because it is so thematically on point. It blows my mind. And it's a creative application of the shuffle mechanic. Uh, but the downside is balance because right now Thanos is reigning supreme in the ladder. And this just absolutely makes it so consistent with Thanos decks that it would be way too broken. All right, so let's talk about the card, right? So it's <laughs> to one, two, ongoing, you only draw cards shuffled into your deck if there are any. Really, really neat. So the best application, right, as I mentioned, is the Thanos. You put all the Infinity Stones there, then you're guaranteed to draw them if you have the Gauntlet out, which just is, is perfect. You got the Gauntlet. It needs the stones. It needs to power up. So you got to draw all those stones and then play them a whole bunch. Perfect. Love it. Probably broken, but still. And it's going to help because when you play the stones, they're going to draw more cards. And uh, if you're drawing cards and you know the for sure that they're going to draw the stones, then it's just great. You're going to get them all. Hopefully you can play Thanos, complete that quest, no problem. Because, you know, as much as Thanos is a bit of a problem on the ladder right now, um, you never really get to complete the quest, which is kind of a bummer. It's, it's very rare. I've played a lot of Thanos. I would say maybe one in 10 times you end up completing the quest. It's not like what's necessary about his package, but it would be cool if it was, you know, the reason you want to play the card is to actually complete the quest. And the stones maybe carry less power and then Thanos himself was always a 21 if you could get him to that point. And the Infinity Gauntlet just kind of enables that, which I really appreciate and thematically works so beautifully. And then you also have cards like Thor. Maybe we don't even need to play Thanos. We just want to get Mjolnir out. And then we have like Thor on three. So let's say this. You play the Infinity Gauntlet on one or two. You play Thor on three. You play Wong. And then you play Mjolnir. And then it doubles the power on that Thor. That's just happy days. That's great value. And then what about Lockjaw, right? Obviously, as I mentioned before, we can't actually get uh, a shot. Shuffling isn't swapping, but think about it this way. You have the Infinity Gauntlet elsewhere, and then you have Lockjaw at one location. Lockjaw is cycling the cards, right? But they're triggering those stones effects, right? And then and then the draw a card, draw a card from the stones is always going to be another stone because of the Infinity Gauntlet. So it's just a nice way to really rip through your deck that way. And then there's other things like sub, like there's ways this can go down. Right? If your opponent's playing that Dark Hawk deck with the rocks and the Korg and the rock slide and whatnot, that means you're always drawing the rocks. Oh no, that's not good. Or there's a chance that if you're playing the Thanos deck that it's going to be one or the other. That's not great. Now your hand is looking like trash. You got to play these rocks to just get them out because you're always going to be drawing these other things. So there's definitely counters to this. It's also ongoing. It can be Enchantress Road even. Uh, so there's a few ways around it. It's a one drop. Killmonger can destroy it. So there's definitely... A, a series of counters but another thing about the ongoing effect is that it's similar to quinjet right a one two ongoing effect that works in spectrum decks so you kind of have to watch out for that and that also just all works together quinjet infinity gauntlet thanos um is blending a little bit too well together i think balance wise it'd be a little bit maybe a little bit wild but oh my gosh you can't deny the theme here is just so so good and also i will have the animated version in Fortnite and animates his cards 
oh, it looks so clean. It looks so real. It blows my mind seeing the creativity that comes out of you guys and the artwork and everything. Oh my gosh, we have such an amazing community in the Berryverse. I love it. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted. Thank you for tonight for this card, but thank you everyone, uh, even the ones that weren't selected. I love reading the custom cards. It's so cool to see what you guys come up with every single week. Next week is the one cost card challenge. So definitely jump in the Berryverse and submit a card. I want to see it. Uh, give me your best creative idea. Uh, I'm excited for it. All right, that's going to do it for me. Snap, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.